I guess that's how we're gonna start the video. What the fuck is in this? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta watch the language though, because YouTube is now cracking down on people who curse, so they don't let them, like, they will demonetize their video. Oh, really fuck them motherfuckers. I'll just put a bleep. Sorry, my bad. I don't care. Here, yeah, these are, these are the same fucking brackets that we got. Not to point anything out, but these are the same exact brackets that have come with, like, these must be generic off the shelf. It's probably just used for more than one something, I guess. The brackets are identical to every other bracket I've ever seen for us to do this with, and they're all garbage. This is the third set of seats we are doing. Um, there's no interest, so what is going on? Uh, we are actually putting the Brahm seats and we're taking out the Cypher seats right now. And the Cyphers are going in the car behind me, which is which is the 5-4 swap. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure to check it out. I'll probably put one link of the car into the description below. But there's about five videos, I think, on the channel. So make sure to check it out. And we're just going to kind of walk around and see what's going on. So what have you been working in? working on in here that's like do you have any advice for anybody like that wants a VW? Uh gasoline and matches. Gasoline and matches. If the Germans could reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. using 25 electrical connectors, they would. They would. Because you know everybody needs more electrical connections in their life. I don't know how many, I've never seen a car with so many sensors. It has a mass air sensor and a barometric pressure sensor. They do the same thing. There's going to be that one person that says, no they don't. You're right. One measures the amount of air being ingested. The other measures the density of the air. Now unfortunately all the other car companies can use a simple equation to go from amount of air ingested to density. Oh, IPW. It only was that easy. Come on, Audi. Let's go look at it. So this is the car that's been literally giving him so much trouble. I think it was like a $500 car. Let's turn into maybe a $1,000 project. I'm not wearing the Chevy shirt. True. You're not going to get any grief for that. You're wearing the Grease Monkey shirt. Yeah. So, I know people are going to say, how did, how did you use the stock brackets? Real simple. These are the stock brackets instead of buying rails that are like $250. I don't know what a rail is about, like two hundred dollars a piece. Oh, I, I custom made. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be the one to comment. So custom made, I would say, are around maybe two hundred to four hundred dollars, depending on, I guess, who you go with, and you got to wait for them to custom make it for your car. It could be a week, two weeks, and then you can have the option for them to powder coat it. I guess any color you wanted. So instead of waiting and doing that, uh, we just went ahead and reused the stock brackets from the factory seats. And these came off the cipher seats that are just being a little touched up to fit the Brom seats. But they really want that off the measure. So this is the passenger side. Yep, passenger side seat. It's not, it's not really rocket science to do this. You just gotta measure your shit a bunch of times. That's all it takes. So versus custom brackets, how much money did I probably spend on just getting stock brackets reused? Uh, the way we did it? Yeah. I think, because I did the same thing to my car. So, probably 30 bucks in it to be able to adapt them. 30 bucks, I think, total. I can't remember. Whatever the 8 inch bar stock steel is. 15. 
18 bucks. 18 they, bucks. They did Home Depot. I think Lowe's were in Depot. You need two of them. So then you do some measuring and then you cut. Right here, the bolsters. Yeah. If you have too many tacos, that could be a mistake. It squeezes the insides. Every, every girl. But that is more comfortable. A lot more comfortable. So this is a $300 market seat. This is a Cypher seat, Cypher Auto. It's the old seat I had in the car. This is the new Brown seat. So do you think, do you think this one's worth the $800? You can feel the difference. You can. The material feels, this feels softer. The foam feels softer. This one feels stiffer. But in my case, because I'm wide and not high. Mm -hmm. um, I actually fit better in this seat. The side bolsters, if they were a little bit wider, I'd, I would have a set of those in my car tomorrow. So, and sitting in the seat, the Cypher seat has the passenger uh, bracket on. This one is the pass. You know, the Cypher seat has the driver side rails and brackets on and this one currently has the passenger and right off hand I know this one's taller I think it's what about like an inch or two taller well, I'd say taller than that just a couple inches yeah, tall yeah at least two or three inches taller not bad and I could definitely feel the difference in the budget from a $300 seat to an $800 I can just feel the material is better the way it was designed is better yeah the, the foam is definitely softer yeah. it's, it's more comfortable I, I felt like when I would drive the cypher one I would kind of sink a little more in this one kind of like heats me up and I mean I'm not you know wide enough to where the bolsters aren't bothering me the I mean I fit and I know I'm not going to go anywhere I did like the cypher seat because it had kind of the side bolster right here. It felt like it would hold you in more. So I feel like I would slide a little bit more because it's up here instead of, you know, yeah. right here. But that's nothing. But you look like you fit better in that seat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nothing to really complain about. So if you're wider, just, I guess, look for the wider options. Yeah, get, a, get the wider bolster. And if your girlfriend's wider, that's, well, that can be a good thing. It can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on where, I guess, the it's width is. For those that don't believe that it's factory. It's factory and the way I did it, by moving the power controls from up here over to the side and then flushing them in with the um, door, door sill. You can open the door on that one, it's the same way. Uh, I think absolutely makes it look the best. So there you go, they usually sit in front of the seat. And that's, I don't know, that's a lot easier too. Like I don't have to reach over and part like down. Yeah. Hall. I, can just... I just, I think that was the, a great idea that I came up with. I was like, well, instead of having to trash the factory controls and actually make up slider brackets so, let me see if this will work this way and it did the only thing you lose out of a GT with these seats is the bolster adjust you lose a lot of weight because that air compressor is up in there too mm -hmm. so so I mean these seats probably weigh about they're Maybe. lighter than the ciphers. I forgot what this says on the website, but maybe 20 pounds each. I don't know, man. I can tell you that they're lighter than the ciphers. I'm not a human scale, so. But, I mean, if you're looking for weight reduction, that's one thing to do. I also did a rear seat delete, and that's actually on the channel, too. Uh, I did that back in March or April, I think. See, I'd do the rear seat delete just like you, mm -hmm. but I got kids. See, I don't. It'll See. happen. It'll happen. You'll be buying back your seat from there. <laughs> See, I don't have back seats because, you know, back seats, no accidents. If you have back seats and kids are back here, they cause accidents, so it's a win-win. Smart ass. <laughs> Yeah.
Pedestal roll. Okay. So this is uh, uh, this is just running out the new holes. Or the already existing holes and just making them a little bigger. You need to make them a little wider. The factory seat sits at 14 inches across. This particular set of seats fits at 14 and a quarter across. So if you just wall them out a little bit, you can make it work. Okay. I think we're on like the, I guess, cheaper end of Gas Monkey Garage. <laughs> we just don't have all the, all the money like they do for the cars that they have. Yeah, no. And that's how you uh, utilize factory hardware? Yep. said I would see you in the car we are vlogging and I'm in the seats after last night installing them and I'm just gonna give my kind of testimony I guess or full review and my honesty on the Brom racing seats the Brom racing seats I have are the Brom racing seats I have are the Venom series seats now they have different seats on their websites. I think they have about five or six different uh, styles of seats. And they kind of all have this um, form right here. So you have ones that have different characteristics and different colors and you can get custom ones, I believe, that they're coming out with sooner or later. And, well, this, so before I get into that, we went ahead and instead of use, instead of paying like 200 to uh, 400 dollars, I'm just guessing on a price range for brackets and rails and all that, we just went ahead and used, like you saw in the earlier part of the video, the install on just using kind of a homemade kind of gas monkey garage kind of thing, kind of measuring, cutting, and drilling holes to use, utilize these stock brackets. Now, I know some of y'all are thinking like, why would you just, you know, why wouldn't you just get aftermarket rails? You're kind of not saving weight and you kind of are. Well, these seats weigh less than the Cypher seats. And these seats, of course, weigh less than the factory seats. Now, if you own a 94 to 04 Mustang, you'll understand how heavy those damn seats are if you change them out to have to market or taking them out to do anything to a car. So, I mean, I still am losing weight some, but then I think it's just kind of cool to be able to, you know, kind of do something different instead of spending a lot of more money instead of spending money that I don't need to and I can do it a lot cheaper so that's why we just went ahead and used the stock factory rails and brackets and everything and didn't use any of the aftermarket parts or any of the stuff that Brom did send and I didn't buy any aftermarket rails. Now I think a company that they go through is Planet Technology. Um, I'm not knocking them or anything. They probably do great work. I never personally use their stuff. I've personally seen their stuff on another car and they fit just good. I just didn't, I just wanted to be different. So the Cypher seats are going into the 5.4 car and I don't know what he's gonna, Mike's gonna do with the stock seats that he has, or I mean the racing seats he has now. They're kind of close to each other, but he wanted those, so hell, 100 bucks, you know, why not? So, 
you can tell that these seats are taller than the Cypher seats if you've seen my other videos and if you have seen the video on the Cypher seat review. And well, I can tell you right now, if you've seen that seat review, and here's my comparison from that seat to this seat. Now that seat right off the market is $300. You're gonna find it on Car ID or like Andy's Auto Sport or whatever, for like $399, but you have deals and discounts and they can give you uh, Redline 360s and other. I pretty much paid $300 for my Cypher seats. I was not sponsored by them and they didn't give it to me for free or discount or anything. And the seat was good. The seat is a good universal seat for what it is if you are, if you are in a budget. You don't want to spend a lot of money, but you want a good looking seat. This seat compared to that seat, that seat was a lot stiffer. That seat kind of smaller on the bolsters on the side. So it would definitely hold you in, but I'm on coilovers and I have adjustable shocks and struts, but if you guys are on lower and springs and coilovers, you know you're gonna feel every damn bump. And mine are and mine are the strange and they're not cheap, but they're not expensive. They're kind of in the middle and they're kind of like the best of both worlds. So they're kind of like a drag race, maybe street driven kind of coilover. And I still have the H&R Super Sport Springs in the back. And the adjustability on the struts and shocks does help, but I don't have them set to where I wouldn't feel everything. I kind of like the more aggressive feel. But being in these seats from driving last night to driving as much as I have all day today, I really haven't felt, I'd say on a scale from 1 to 100, I haven't felt like 70% of the bumps that I would have felt in the Cypher seats. Now the Cypher seats were made good, but they were really, they were kind of starting to wear really easy. Now I've only had them since the summertime, late summer, uh, probably like late July, I think they were installed. And it just kind of amazes me. I know my car is a daily driver. I know my car, you know, I, I have my windows down, the sun hits it, this and that. The color didn't really turn. It was black leather. Um, the color didn't really turn, you know, fade out or anything. It's just a side bolster on the driver's side, kind of to show its wear. And I really tried to figure out where and how it did because I'm using the stock seat belt, the factory seat belt. I eventually will go to a harness bar and a creed or three or five point harness from Rom, but the seat belt wasn't wearing in that position. I even put a piece of padding over it so where just in case that was maybe it, getting in and out of the seat, I would be careful because I would be careful to make sure like, you know, not to mess it up as much as I couldn't. But I just, from looking at it last night, comparing to the seat, the quality in the Brom seat is much better. Now, yes, the Brom seat is pretty much near $1,000. It's in the $800 range, and then they go up, I believe. These are right around, I believe, like $800, maybe $900. But still, you're paying a lot more for, you know, you're paying a couple hundred dollars more for in the Corbo range, and not in the Recaro range, but the Sparco range and the Bride range, maybe. I don't know how much of those seats all cost, but from what I've seen, they have different variants um, of pricing, so you kind of get to the quality where you would you know, expect Sparco and Bride to have because they're really good seats. And the other different, the other difference in this seat as well is the Cypher seat. I felt was more of a, even though it was called a like touring seat, it was more of a universal kind of like race feel seat. So you would. you would definitely feel like if you sat in the seat you would definitely be like oh this is more of a racing seat style but it still looks good it's comfortable for what it is this seat i feel like it does have the rat the race aspect behind the engineering of it i guess of how it looks the design of it but i feel it's more of a touring seat i honestly feel like when i first sat in the seat that I was sitting in a seat that you would find in like a factory 2015 Mustang or a 2015 Camaro, an Audi or BMW. Just the attention to detail that Brom did from the unboxing to making sure the seat didn't get screwed up or scuffed up or scratched with the plastic over it. And just even going to having the plastic 
and having their name stamped all over it just to let you know like where they're coming from let you know that they're standing behind the customer and they want the customer to be happy and the attention to detail on this seat the way it's designed i know there's other seats out there that look like this and i know there's other seats in the price range or maybe even cheaper that someone's going to say oh you know may use the same material or material or not but honestly i feel like braun really cares and i just feel like they pay attention to detail like that just to find detail points and that's what i was looking for overall in a seat i mean i love the cypher seats but i just kind of wanted something different so i reached out to braun and they definitely hooked me up and i gotta give them you know props and a shout out or thanks or however you want to say it for helping me get the right seats into my car and my car is 16 years old and you know everything's not the best i have aftermarket suspension out the ass on this car and this car is a performance car i guess if you want to say that but it's my daily driver and i wanted to feel comfortable and brahm definitely nailed it and i'm not here to push you know oh you guys gotta get to see this is the only seat this is the best seat there are other great companies out there but first hand and foremost I can just tell you, give Braum a chance if you're looking for seats. God, the light is in sunlight in my damn eyes. If overall, if you guys are just looking for a great company with great company feedback, you know, that cares about the customer and great customer support because they were just wanted like that. Whenever I emailed them, like I said in my last video, they and just pay attention to detail. Definitely Braum Racing a chance. I promise you, majority of you or I hope most of you or all of you, you won't be disappointed. If you guys are ever in the area or having a car show or car meet or something that I'm at and you guys want to check out these seats, you're more than welcome. Again, they're the Venom Series seats on romracing.com. Make sure to stay subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed already and you want future content on this car and to follow the build, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make and make sure to smash that like button too because damn it these seats are just that great so i will catch you guys in the next video i hope every single one of you enjoyed this just kind of montage video i had fun making it and i will catch you guys in the next one have a great one